Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're once again going to be talking about the likelihood now that a tropical system could develop there offshore of Florida. We're going to be talking about that all throughout this very, very detailed video. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know what your prediction for this tropical system is. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking the best one for tomorrow's video. Now let's get straight into things. First things first, we're taking a look at our five-day graphical outlook here from the National Weather Service here or the National, National Hurricane Center. We have a 70% chance that in the next five days we're going to see this disturbance develop into at least a subtropical depression, possibly even a subtropical storm at this point. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at those spaghetti models, and this is the first time I get to look at one of these this year, which is very exciting because it's been many, many months since I've gotten to look at one of these. We only have two models that are so far on this, and both of them keep it well, well offshore. Now, typically, we don't have a map for May, but we do have a map for what typically happens in June, and typically, they would not develop there just north of the Bahamas or offshore of Florida. Typically, they would only be able to develop... Uh, in the Gulf, and then maybe cross over Florida and head into the southeast coast there. But really, this is a very unusual place for a storm to develop, a very, very unusual situation in general, I guess. It's very, very early on, and it's making me feel like this season is going to be very active, which I already thought before, but this is really just reassuring my thoughts on that. Let me know what you think about that as well. I had a lot of you in the comment section yesterday talking about how you think it's going to be very active. But let me know again what you guys are thinking so far about this season. I'm thinking it's going to probably be very, very active. All right, now we're about to move on, take a look at some other climate climate type stuff, and then we're also going to go ahead and get into our simulated radar and our simulated total winds. All right, and here we are. We're taking a look actually here at kind of a graph that shows us the number of storms in the past 100 years per date. And you can see that it's not unheard of to have tropical activity after May 10th. You can see on the very, very left there, we have May 10th. And it is possible to see hurricanes and tropical storms this time of year before June 1st. So it isn't like it's a historic event here, but it's very, very unusual because you can see comparatively as we head into the month of June and July, the likelihood raises a lot. Uh, now, let's go ahead and also take a look at this wind scale. This is what we're going to need to pay attention to because if it's under... 34 knots, we're going to be looking at a tropical depression, but if it's above 34 knots, we're going to be looking at a subtropical storm. So we're going to need to really pay attention to that because we're going to take a look at the winds in a second. We'll be able to see if we're thinking it's going to be a subtropical storm or a subtropical depression only. All right, now we're about to move on again and take a look at that simulated radar finally. And then again, we're going to get into like total rainfall, total winds, wind gusts, all sorts of effects. Florida looks to get even more impacted than I originally thought yesterday. We'll talk all about that. All right, and here we are taking a look at that simulated radar, and this is actually going to be by Thursday, maybe about 8 a.m., and you can see we're going to have thunderstorms throughout the Gulf and south of the Florida Keys there, maybe even impacting the Florida Keys. It's as we move on towards Friday at maybe about, I don't know, 3 a.m. or so, we start to see those thunderstorms move onshore, actually, to southern, southern Florida there, then... By the time we're at about 8 p.m. on Friday, May 15th, we can see that this actually becomes a lot more organized just offshore of Miami there. Uh, th this is going to be bringing major, major impacts there to that southeast coast of Florida because we're seeing very potent thunderstorms and heavy rain right there. And also, that might help to bring down a lot of the wind there. We might see very, very strong winds right there with those organized areas of thunderstorms that's going to eventually become our tropical depression or tropical storm. Taking a look at those winds actually here on this model, we can see that we have 20 to 30 knot winds there in the greens and light yellows. So those are just offshore of Miami. So we're going to see some pretty windy conditions actually there along the coast. I would say 20 knots plus, which is some pretty pretty strong winds if you ask me and that's going to be bringing some pretty major impacts there for the southeast coast of florida like i said before 
All right, now we're about to move on, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what the GFS has to say because we're too far in for the NAM to go ahead and show us any more frames. So we're going to have to lower the resolution a little bit, but we're going to see what happens as this moves up along the Florida coast and heads towards more of the central eastern Florida coast there. All right, and as you can see, those winds actually increase as we see it head north. And we're going to see some of those greens, yellows, and even oranges showing up there for the more central eastern Florida coast there. And those are going to be heavily impacting the coast. Now, as I'm taking a closer look here, I can definitely see that those greens and yellows are making it pretty far inland, probably at least 10 miles inland. So we are going to have some pretty windy and gusty conditions along that east coast of Florida, all the way from Miami northward. All right, now let's take a look at what that simulated radar on the GFS is going to look like by that point. And you can see we're still dealing with heavier showers, possibly even some thunderstorms as well, which in those heavier areas of thunderstorms, you're obviously going to see more windy conditions. It's going to help bring down those windier conditions. So in the heavier showers, we will see more imminent threats of those types of, uh, you know, precipitation and also wind is going to come along with that. Now, by 8 a.m. on Saturday, we see that the low pressure system actually moves further north and intensifies a bit, but we see less and less of those oranges on shore, and it's more just showers at this point. But our wind, as we can take a look here, is also still impacting that eastern coast of Florida. We're still seeing those greens and yellows make their way on shore. Now, the GFS keeps this storm a lot closer to the coast than any of the other models, actually. This is very unusual from the rest of the pack and the reason why I'm showing this is because it's better to be safe than sorry so we're going to go ahead and side with the one that's going to show the worst case scenario here just in case that's what happens I want you guys to be prepared that it could be along the Florida coast here but also could develop a little bit further east which would be really good news we'd have less impacts for that Florida coast there Let's go ahead and take it to 2 p.m. on Saturday and you can see it starts to actually move a little bit further eastward and the winds become a little bit less of a threat there for the Florida coast. And as we take a look at the simulated radar on that same frame, we can see we see less and less precipitation on Florida and more of it is out to sea. All right, now we're about to go ahead and move on. We're going to take a look at the full development of this storm as it heads out to sea. We're going to take a look at how intense this one could actually get. And then we're going to actually move on to like things like total rainfall and those wind gusts at the very end of this video. All right, and here's by time we're at about 8 a.m. on Monday. So this is well into the development of this storm. We're actually pretty far in. Uh, but we can see there is going to be possibly some gusty winds just offshore of South Carolina and North Carolina by this storm. If it was to track a little bit closer to the coast, we would obviously see more impacts there. Uh, but this one's well enough offshore where there will not be major impacts for the eastern seaboard. But look at that, a 991 millibar low pressure system. So this one is intensifying as time goes along. I had a lot of people commenting yesterday, well, the waters are cold. This one isn't really going to develop, but it actually, the models like to see this one develop further and further as it heads up the East Coast. So that's very interesting. There is a high pressure system near Bermuda. This is a very classic setup. If we see that further east than what they are expecting or as they're expecting, then this one will have plenty of space to be offshore. But if we see the high pressure system further west than what the models are expecting, if we see it west of Bermuda or at Bermuda, we could see this storm actually be pushed a lot closer to the east coast. So that's something we're going to need to watch very, very closely. I'm looking forward to, to the discussions we have for this one on Weather Freaks. Uh, that's our Facebook group. That's going to be in the comment down below. And also my Twitter is as well. I'll probably be posting some updates for this one. Let's go ahead and look at 8 a.m. on Monday. And you can see it very, very quickly moves further north again. If that, low, if that high pressure system is further west, we will see the low pressure system be further west as well, potentially impacting New England and the northeastern United States much, much more closely. But we see a 984 millibar low pressure system by this point with, four, with 64 knot winds. That's very, very intense. That's a strong tropical storm by that point. And then by time we're at about 2 a.m. on Wednesday, you can see it's moving further and further north. And we see a 993 millibar low pressure system here, very, very far north. Let's go ahead and look at those total rainfalls here. And you can see in the green, we're looking at anything to about half an inch of rain. 
In the blues, we're looking at about half an inch to two inches of rain. And in those purplish shades, which is mostly for southern Florida, which again is where we saw that very, very heavy precipitation move onshore directly from this tropical disturbance. That's going to be two to six inches of rain, possibly. Let's go ahead and look at briefly those wind gusts. Here's for Miami, and this is the maximum wind gusts I can see for Miami on this one. It's going to be about 30 mile per hour winds. We're looking at mile per hour now. About 30 mile per hour winds for Miami here at the peak, and this is at about 8 a.m. on Friday. That's when you guys are going to have your peak winds from this system. Let's go ahead and take it to about 12 p.m. on Friday, and you can see it moves further north and actually intensifies 34 to 46 mile per hour wind gusts there, and that actually moves pretty far on shore. So it's going to be windy throughout the state of Florida with this one if the GFS solution is correct. Let's go ahead and take a look at about 8 p.m. on Friday, and you can see it intensifies further. We see 40 mile per hour to 50 mile per hour winds. That orange is indicating areas of 50 mile per hour plus winds, gusts that is, and that's very intense. Uh, and then by the time we're at about, I would say, 5 p.m. on Saturday, you can see that this actually starts to impact mostly the eastern coast there of Florida, where we're seeing about 30 mile per hour wind gusts there. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what is your favorite cut of steak? And J. Gabriel Cramp said, I adore ribeye since it is a nice and tender with great flavor. Uh, I completely agree with that. I love a ribeye steak. My favorite steakhouse is Texas Roadhouse. Oh my gosh, I love all of their food, fried pickles, blooming onion, all of it. I love, oh my goodness, don't even get me started with their rolls too. That is a great, great restaurant right there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.